Well, we're moving right along through this series. We're already up to video number six. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to run commands that you normally wouldn't have access to run. Basically, the root user can do everything. It's almost like God mode on Linux. Your normal user account has some restrictions. So I'm going to show you how to run commands with administrative permissions, which is called sudo in Linux. That's what I'm going to show you in this video. So let's go ahead and dive back in. Now, in a previous video, I was using an example where I did nano and then the file name slash etc or etsy as we like to pronounce it ssh sshd underscore config, which is a file you may or may not have. But if I press enter, it's telling me down here, error reading the file permission is denied. I can't even view it. And you know what? I can't view it at all whatsoever because even if I use the cat command, I'm also going to get permission denied. Now, user permissions are something we are going to go over in more detail in the future. But the takeaway so far is that your user account can only do so much. You could do anything in your home directory by default. But if you start to go outside of your home directory and, you know, the home directory is this path right here, slash home, slash your username. If you go outside of that, as we are doing here, then you're going to get permission denied because your user account is not going to have permission to go ahead and do that. Now, there's a few ways that we can go ahead and work around this. Now, one way, I'll bring the command back, the nano command, is we can use sudo in front of the command, which stands for super user do. Super user, in our case, generally refers to root, which again is like the god mode. If you've ever played the game Doom, you know exactly what that means. It's like the account that can do anything at all for better or worse. Now, the root account can even delete the entire operating system in one command. That's how powerful the root user is, which is why by default, you aren't allowed to do things that the root user can do. And it's not that the system doesn't trust you. Well, actually, technically, it kind of doesn't. It just wants to make you think twice before you execute a command that is beyond your normal scope. So sudo, if I press enter here, and again, it was sudo and then whatever command that I wanted to run, in this case, nano, and then the file name, it's going to ask for my user password right here, which I'll go ahead and put in. And as you can see right there, I am now able to read and write to that file. Now, of course, be careful with this. We don't want to make any actual changes to anything in the Etsy directory just yet. This is just an example. Go ahead and exit out of here. Now, why does this work? How does this work? Now, in the future, I'm going to go into more detail into this when we start to talk about user permissions and creating users and things like that. But the sudo command is actually controlled by a special group. And groups are also something we'll get into in a future video. But for right now, if I execute the groups command, it will tell you which groups your user is a member of. And as you can see here, my user is a member of the wheel group. In CentOS, by default, that's the group that is allowed access to sudo. So basically, if you create a brand new user, that user won't have wheel by default, and they won't even be able to use sudo. This is to make sure that your company's sales rep, Barry, can not go ahead and start editing system level files and bring down your server. No offense, Barry, we love you, but we have to be careful. We need to have some kind of protocol and that's what permissions allows us to do. Now we can give access to a group like sudo to a user if we do want them to be able to execute commands as root or commands that they normally wouldn't be able to run. Sudo, by default, gives that user access to do anything that root can do. And you can even make sudo a little bit more restrictive and even make it so that a user can only execute sudo with certain commands. That's beyond the scope of this video. But the takeaway so far is that if you want to run a command that you normally wouldn't have access to run that only root can typically do, one way to get around that is to use sudo. 
I showed you with nano, and if you recall, the cat command isn't even a possibility either. But I could go ahead and recall the command and I could put sudo right in front of that and it'll work just fine. Well, actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to break out of here and I'm going to show you an easier way because I'm going to tell you something. I've been using Linux for about two decades now and I still can't remember to use sudo every single time I want to run an administrative command. So I'll constantly just do something like this. And believe me, I know that I need administrative access to run a command against something that I don't have permission to access, but I'll often just forget to use sudo. Now an easier way to fix this is we could do sudo, and instead of typing out that entire command again, I could just type two exclamation points like that to run the most recently run command, but put sudo in front of it. And that will work. Now this time it didn't ask for the password and that's because you don't need to put in your password every single time that will eventually time out. But it wasn't that long ago that I used sudo and entered in the password. So I don't need to enter it again just yet. We'll get back to the video shortly, but I wanna take a moment to thank my sponsor, Linode. In fact, there's never been a better time to try Linode because from now until April 30th, 2020, Linode is giving every single account access to object storage for free. That's right, whether you've created an account way back in 2003 or just today, you can take advantage of free object storage at Linode until April 30th. And what precisely is object storage, you might ask? Object storage is an easy way for you to store and access data without the need for a running server. And it's perfect for data that doesn't regularly change, like images and other multimedia files, important backups, or giant archives for servers that might need more storage space. One of the best use cases for object storage is hosting your own static website. You can have a site up and highly available on Linode's object storage service with as little as an HTML and CSS file. To give Object Storage a try for free and get an additional $20 credit on your new Linode account, sign up at www.linode.com slash learnlinuxtv. I really appreciate Linode as a sponsor. Not only are they a sponsor, they've been my cloud infrastructure provider for quite some time now, and their service is awesome. Definitely check them out. Now, let's get back to the video. Now, if we really want to activate God mode, so to speak, we could just use this command right here to switch user. We can use this command to switch to a different user on the system. If I don't give it any argument at all, it's going to default to root. I'll press enter. And now it's asking for password, but it's not asking for my user's password. If I was to put that in, it's going to fail. Authentication failure. I need to actually enter the root password for the actual root user itself. So I'll do that. And now you'll notice that my username right here has changed to root. It says J right here because I am in my home directory for my user J. And it's not showing tilde anymore because root's home directory is not here. In fact, root doesn't even have a user account in slash home roots user is actually slash root. And there's actually some config files in there that are left over from the installation. I'm not gonna get into that just yet. I just showed you another way to run administrative commands and that is to just log in as root. Now this is very much discouraged to run as root because you will not be prompted anymore before you delete something important or run any command. The system will assume that you know what you're doing. That's why we prefer sudo because it does add a little bit of overhead to the administration that you're trying to do. But that's kind of a good thing because it might make you think twice. If you are logged in as root, maybe you might take it for granted and run something you shouldn't be running. Now I've seen many Many Linux administrators run as root with no issue whatsoever, but they understand that that's not a good idea necessarily and that when they are running as root, to just be careful. That's something that's basically learned with time. And then to log out, I can simply type exit to log out of root and back to my user, but I could also do control D as well. Now I am back to my user account, as you see right here. Now in future videos, I will be explaining sudo in more detail. I will also show you how to create users 
I'll show you how to create groups and how to understand permissions. So I'll fill in all the blanks that you might have so far later on in the series. But for now, thank you for watching this video. I think that about does it. And I will see you in the next video as soon as I have that uploaded, if I don't already. See you there.